Hey folks, welcome back to another edition of Review with Tanners. I'm Jim, and today we're going to talk to you about why we made the move from our six 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries to three of their 270 amp hour batteries, and why that was important to us the way we camp in the Pacific Northwest. It can be different for you based on where you are. So if you watch this video, it just kind of gives an understanding of why it's important to us and why it could be important to you. Some interesting feet, uh, notes. Um, I did do a pretty detailed video on these new batteries, the 270 amp hour versions from Battleborn, about six months ago. They weren't released yet, they were just announced. So I'll put a link up in the corner to that video. Go ahead and take a moment and watch that, and you'll get a lot more details, the specs behind it, the measurements, and everything about the batteries. But with this video, we're going to talk about the actual installation. I think I made a mistake in that video too. I think I said the batteries were 75 pounds. They're actually 80 pounds, so five pounds more. So correct myself there in this video based on the last video. Um, one last thing, at the end of this video, you're gonna hear me talk about why you can't combine the 100 amp hour batteries with the 270 amp hour batteries. And I talked about the chemistry at the end of the video, but there's also a constraint on the actual BMS. So the BMS in the 100 amp hours and the BMS in the 270 amp hours don't talk well to each other, if you will. There's probably some technical reasons behind it that I don't really fully understand. However, if you draw an analogy to like solar panels, if you were to have say three or four 100 watt solar panels on the roof of your RV and you were to come back later and add some say 300 or 400 watt, hour, uh, watt panels, those are gonna be reduced to the lowest common denominator. So the same in the batteries. If you have the 100 amp hour and you add the 270 amp hours, the battery, the BMS, the battery management system, doesn't talk well to one another and it's gonna lower that 270 down to the 100. So we got rid of ours, we just have the three 270s. I kinda wanted to make sure you understood that going in uh, because it was exciting to me thinking I could add the 270s to the 600, but it didn't actually work out. Um, one thing to talk about on these new ones, the 8D is the version that we have. Uh, it can do 300 amps continuous per battery. It can do 500 amps for 30 seconds per battery. And then finally, it can do a, um, a surge for a half a second over 500 amps. So they have the ability to do that, that tiering there based on what you have, what the usage for uh, your system. Currently, uh, we're at September of 2021 right now. The Battleborns are on sale for $2,259 down from their $2,800 original price. So that's a savings of about $541. So hopefully when you're watching this video, <laughs> the uh, sale is still going on and you get that price. Um, so just call Battleborn to make sure you get the best price possible. Uh, finally, what you're gonna see is what I call my rat's nest <laughs> inside where I, um, uh, wire all of my systems together, the the inverter converter, the batteries, um, and everything inside there. Um, I am planning to make that better in the future, and I'm gonna pop up a quick um, PowerPoint here and show you what I'm going to do. So as you can see, I've got my shore power coming in, uh, then it goes through my progressive um, EMS. And then what I'm thinking about doing is adding a new Victron Multi Plus 2 and then powering uh, my batteries through that. I want to be able to use the Victron in order to use the Bluetooth capabilities. Uh, I love my GoPower IC2000 right now, but I don't have the ability to use Bluetooth to connect into that. And then I'll bring in the Lynx um, conversion uh, there where I can bring in all the positive and negative connections. So I don't have any of this stuff purchased yet. I'm just kind of thinking about it, but I just kind of wanted to show you where I'm going in the future and how I'm gonna clean up that rat's nest. Okay, so let's jump off to the actual video and I'm gonna to start to show you the installation process for these batteries. Okay, so the installation has started. I have taken out my existing six 100 amp hour battle blown batteries and I've brought in one of the new BB8D 270 amps and I'm just kind of test fitting it to see how I want it to go. I've got some lumber here that I've um, attached to the floor to kind of hold in the other ones. And we're gonna see if that's gonna work for these. I'm assuming I'm gonna have to move it over just a bit. And then we'll see how it goes. All three batteries are now installed. I'm waiting on my four aught cable because originally I did not have that. I was using two aught. And with these batteries, I think it's gonna be safe to actually go up to four aught uh, versus just the two because I got a lot of power running through that IC2000. Uh, so as it's sitting right now, everything's looking really good. Um, as you remember from my original uh, installation on the floor, I used a, uh, a, a doormat on, below them to kind of keep the vibration down, and that worked really well. Unfortunately, they don't span long enough. So I've got a piece of foam under this third one here, and it's a little bit wonky. It's a little too high. 
I'm going to wait a couple days to see if that foam actually compresses a little bit more with these batteries before I pull it out and make sure that uh, I want to go with something else. I might just get another floor mat and run the entire length. Long-term plan is maybe build a shelf over the top of this to kind of recover some space uh, because there's no reason not to have them covered. They don't need to breathe or you have to add water to them. So that's a very good value. I do have envy of some of you guys out there, and I know who some of you are, that do really good jobs of wire management. It's not my forte. It, my management of wiring is it works, and it works well. Um, maybe someday I might get in there and tidy everything up. But for now, it's kind of a rat's nest, and you guys can make fun of me if you want to. But it, it works, so it works for me. everybody so in a spot like this we get a great amount of sunlight from about 8 in the morning to about 2 in the afternoon so this is fantastic for our boondocking adventures so you might be asking why are we upgrading our current Battleborn battery configuration from 600 amp hours the six batteries to three batteries of 270 amp hours making a total of 810 so at our next location we'll show you why that's important to us again looking at this you don't really understand why I would upgrade because I have plenty of solar I have about 600 uh, watts of solar on the roof we get plenty of power, we get to about 95% back every day, so that's great. But in different kind of locations we're going to jump to next, you can see why this is more important for us. Where we are now is more of a typical campground here in Oregon where we camp, and the shade is a lot more prevalent, so it impacts our roof solar. So as we pan over, we're going to see now I have here my uh, external panel, so 200 watts of uh, power going here into the RV, and that's getting me about 7, 8, 9 amps, depending on when the angle is. But as you can see up on the roof of the RV, it's completely in shade now, and it is all day long. So gone is all the production on the roof of our RV. So now you understand why we need a larger battery bank versus more solar on the roof. So now what I'm going to do is show you the inside of what's going on. So if you remember uh, before, I'll put a link up in the corner to the six battery install. It had a bunch of gables going between all of the batteries. So we've removed most of those now. As you can see with just the three 270 amp hour Battleborn batteries, the cabling is much cleaner. I don't have that cable mess as I had before. What I have realistically is I've got the last cable going off here to my shunt. And then the wires are, or the negatives are connected together. I'll look really close. I'll pop up a picture and show you that they're not touching, which is key because you don't want those to kind of vibrate and kind of cut into the cable. I did upgrade to a four aught cable for this uh, battery setup. I had two aught before, which was probably sufficient, but going with that four aught gave me the ability to maybe upgrade my inverter converter to the future to maybe a 3000 watt. So while I was doing it, I just wanted to make it super clean and go four versus two aught. So then off of here, we go off to the uh, uh, power inverter converter, and everything's fine. I've got two chargers. Before you saw, I was talking about, here's where my MPP controller is for the roof solar. And then the little solar here, uh, my 7515, is for the portable power, and it's the one supplying power to us right now. Hey, so folks, we're back now from camping, and I've got some final thoughts I wanna just run through before we close the video. If you do have questions on lithium and you wanna see all my comparisons versus lithium versus AGM, take a look at the video I'm gonna link. Um, I'm gonna have it down below, and I'm gonna put a link up in the corner, and it goes through a lot of information. I've got some PowerPoint, and it talks about the value of lithium over AGM flooded. So if, take a minute and watch that video as well to get yourself kinda of educated. To answer the question, why do we move to 810? Well, I talked about it a little bit in the, while I was at both of the campgrounds. And for us here in the Pacific Northwest, being able to camp in remote locations doesn't allow me to get a lot of solar, as you saw uh, when we were at that last campground. So what we need to do is take the power with us and be able to use it there. It varies for everybody. I get asked so many times, well, how much solar should I have, Jim, versus how much uh, battery power should I have? And that varies based on who you are, how you camp. So for Linda and I, 810 seems to be at the, about the right number, but for others, if you go remote, maybe you don't have an inverter. Maybe you only use DC power, and that's gonna last you much longer. We enjoy waking up in the morning, turning on the coffee maker, and freshly brewed coffee, the heat is on in the coffee pot, so that uses a little bit of power but we're ready for that. That's how we've planned to camp. It's a, again, a balancing act based on how you camp. I'm gonna draw on a little analogy for you. So I'm gonna transition to a different view and we'll get to an analogy for you. Okay, folks, so here we are in the back of my truck. And the analogy that I wanna draw is your batteries equals the gas tank in your vehicle. 
and your solar equals gas stations. For us, we travel great distances to remote locations where there's not always a, an easy gas station to get into, or it's not available, and it might not have diesel. So what we've done is added a 40 gallon external tank. So basically equate that to us adding more battery to the RV. It allows us to get out, stay out, and not have that tie myself to trying to find gas stations. Again, because we have a lot of solar uh, possibility on top of the roof, but we have camp in a lot of trees, so it doesn't allow us to access that. So the opposite of that is think about gas stations equals solar on top of your RV. More and more you have them along the freeway, you can continuously fill up, fill up. So if you have the ability, say you're in Arizona, something of that nature where there's not a lot of trees, you can get a lot of solar on top of your roof during the day and fill up your batteries. It's a balancing act, folks, so you have to kind of just figure out how you camp, where you camp, and what's important to you to make sure you find the right balancing act. Um, so the one thing I want to also talk about is combining my old batteries. When I first thought about this, getting the 810 uh, amp hours of batteries, the three 270s, I thought, well, great, I can add my 600s. Well, no, you cannot. So unfortunately, the chemistry behind the 100 amp hour and the 270 amp hours doesn't allow them to be combined together. So I made my sister happy and I made a buddy of mine happy uh, moving those off to the side. I thought about putting them in there, maybe on some different battery switches and then wiring maybe just the AC to one. At the end of the day, it was just too much hassle for me. I decided it wasn't worth it. 810 was enough for how we camp. We're not full timers yet. So it worked out well for us. One of my favorite things to tell people when they're asking me between solar and batteries is to take a trip to one of your favorite camp spots. So go there, but this camp spot should have power as a backup. But when you arrive, say Friday night, don't plug in. Start to use your RV as you normally would. Turn everything on. Don't really skimp on power. Use it like you normally would when you're out camping. And then you're going to know, do I have enough battery or do I have enough solar? If you make it to Saturday afternoon and you don't have enough battery, is it because you didn't have enough solar on top to charge your batteries? Or is it because your battery bank A wasn't big enough in order to provide you through that? If your battery bank you feel is too small, then add another battery, same make, same model, and then do it again. And start to get that feel for how you can make it out there longer. So our goal is to last about 10 days, and we can do that now with the 810 amp hours that we have. And that's about a good number for us. We're done camping after 10 days. But you're, you could be varied based on how you want to camp. So again, go to that camp spot, figure out what's best for you, and do a balancing act between adding more solar and adding more battery. Everyone's different. There is no right or wrong answer, folks, here. The only right answer is just to get out there, stay out there, and have fun. Enjoy your RV. Use what you have now, and just kind of figure out, is it additional solar or is it additional batteries that I need? So that's about a wrap to this video, folks. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please put them down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye. So if you haven't done so yet, please remember to hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell so that it reminds you when we post new videos.